morning. Thank you to Mayor Greenberg and your team, Rachel, for your leadership through this. I'm not here today simply as a congressman. I am a lifelong Louisvillian, born and raised here, and my heart hurts. I got the call yesterday when I was in Washington, D.C., and we didn't know exactly what had happened yet, but you got that feeling of dread, that something's wrong, that this isn't normal. And then more information starts coming out, and the heartbreak begins, and the names start coming out, and we know them, and they're friends, because this is Louisville. Louisville, Kentucky, the biggest small town in America. We call it Louisville Village because really and truly everybody knows everybody. We are not seven degrees of separation from people in Louisville. We are one degree of separation from people in Louisville. When we ask you what school did you go to, we mean high school. I went to Manuel High School. My mom went to Wagner High School. Louisville is my home. And we are hurting. This is an unimaginable tragedy for our community. As Mayor Greenberg mentioned, Deanna Eckert passed away last night, a truly lovely woman. Jim Tut is no longer with us. Josh Barrick is no longer with us the woman who was the maid of honor in our wedding and for whom we are the godparents of two of their children, called me yesterday from the Barracks house and said, I'm with Jessica Barrack. She hasn't heard from her husband. Can you find out if he's alive? I called LMPD and as they did everything yesterday, were quick in their response. I had to call back and say, I cannot confirm anything, but he is not on the list of survivors and she had to tell their two small children that their father would never come home from work. Juliana Farmer is no longer with us. Tommy Elliott, my friend, is no longer with us. Because it's Louisville, I didn't just know Tommy, I knew Tommy well. His wife even worked with my wife for a time at a company here in town. Their lives have been forever changed. The people who knew them are forever changed. Our community is forever changed. I am so grateful to the quick response of the Louisville Metro Police Department. Chief, your team was incredible yesterday. To run headfirst into that gunfire without question saved lives. It also changed lives. Officer Wilt, as we know, is fighting right now after being struck in the head by an AR-15 round on his fourth ever shift as a police officer. To the team at U of L, thank you, Dr. Smith. Again, this is the collateral damage of gun violence. Every person who touched these victims and these officers had to deal with this trauma and will have to process this trauma in their own way. Thank you also to all of our first responders, the Louisville Fire Department, our emergency medical technicians, to the FBI, to the ATF, to everyone who is involved. Continue to pray for the people recovering. They need it, and we want it. Today and in the weeks ahead, we are grieving. We are hurting. We are heartbroken. We are despondent. But we are Louisvillians. And that same close-knit community that creates this heartbreak will knit together the strength that brings us back. I'm proud of the mayor and his team for the job they've done. I've talked with the governor. 
I've also worked with federal authorities, talking with Secretary Mayorkas at Homeland Security and the Vice President of the United States. They are sending additional resources to Louisville, including counseling resources. Unfortunately, this is not the first, second, or third time an incident like this has happened in our country. They know what to do, and they're going to be helping us out. I will continue with our federal and local officials to mobilize the resources we need, working with our police departments, our faith leaders, our city and state leaders to make sure that our city receives what it needs to begin healing. And we need to take this grief and turn it into action. I am a person of faith. I was raised in the church. We've raised our kids in the church. Please, if you are a person of faith and you want to give us your thoughts and your prayers, we want them and we need them. Our community is hurting. But we need policies in place that will keep this from happening again so that thoughts and prayers do not have to be offered to yet another community ripped apart by the savage violence coming from guns. Look at what's happening. I had somebody tell me the other day, don't make this political. Fine, don't make this political. People's lives aren't political. Public safety isn't political. Put those policies in place that put people first. People over guns, kids over guns, public safety over guns. Because that is what we need to address this problem. I'm an optimist. Maybe to be a Democrat in Kentucky, you have to be. <laughs> but I have seen us come together in the state legislature where I served before being elected to Congress, working with some of my conservative colleagues to introduce crisis aversion rights retention laws that would help temporarily remove firearms from people in crisis. This investigation is dynamic, it is ongoing. But we know this shooter purchased an AR-15 rifle on April 4th. We know he left a note. We know he texted or called at least one person to let them know he was suicidal and contemplating harm. But we don't have the tools on the books to deal with someone who is an imminent danger to themselves or to others. We can do this. We can come together at the federal level, working with each other to solve this problem, which is impacting all of us in a uniquely American way and get universal background checks so that people who shouldn't have a gun can't buy one, that we are taking weapons of war off of our streets, that we are helping people who are in crisis. That is not a political issue, but it becomes one when Kentucky Republicans would rather ban books and pronouns and then make Kentucky a sanctuary state for weapons. We are hurting. And no matter what policy we pass, no, it will not bring back these people. This will not bring back our friends, our neighbors, and our loved ones. We will continue to get the resources for our community that we need. And we will continue to work to make sure that we have the policies in place that keep other families, other loved ones, other kids from going through this tragedy again.